Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Paleo Fridays with me, your host, Seth Chagi. And, of course, as all of you know, this is a little bit late coming out today on a Sunday, but that's all right, because I wanted to spend the weekend gathering a lot of input on what you guys wanted to see in this video and what you wanted to learn about. And I saw a lot of different answers and some interesting topics. And one thing that a lot of people were interested in was populations, uh, whether it be Neanderthal populations, Homo sapiens populations, or really any ancient hominin population. And it's such a fascinating science, that of populations and population genetics and diversity and learning how different groups migrated to different areas at different times and how different populations were created, destroyed, and it's just, it's so fascinating and it really is a very important part of understanding genetics, DNA, and anthropology. So one thing that I wanted to talk about today that I think is fascinating that probably so many of you will agree on is, as most of you should know, our species, modern Homo sapiens, originated in Africa about 250 to 300,000 years ago and migrated around the world from there. There were multiple dispersals. It wasn't a single out of Africa event, but there were multiple out of Africa migrations. It was not something that happened elsewhere. It was not something that happened only once. Now, the origins of today's populations outside of Africa are all extraordinarily related to each other. There is more population diversity among African tribes than there is among any people outside of Africa. What does this mean? Well, that means that the populations within Africa were A, there longer and had more time to diversify, but also B, there wasn't what we will find out was a bottleneck that stopped the growth of outside of Africa populations. So modern humans left Africa about 60, 65,000 years ago is what the consensus is for right now. And around 70,000 years ago, and this is pretty well dated, we have an eruption of a volcano in Indonesia uh, called Mount Toba. Now, the Mount Toba eruption was not something that we see very often um, because of how utterly explosive this event was. Uh, it was definitely... It, the Mount Toba eruption was definitely something that signified the start of something new for modern humans because of what it stopped, what it destroyed. Now, as a super volcano located in present-day Lake Toba in Sumatra, Indonesia, it's one of the Earth's largest known explosive events. Now, this event actually caused a volcanic winter that lasted six to ten years and contributed to a thousand-year-long cooling episode leading to a genetic bottleneck in modern humans. Now, why would this happen? Well, with a cooler climate, a lot of the resources that modern humans use were depleted, from food to clothing to animals to different migration patterns and the hunting that we would do. This eruption changed almost everything that modern humans knew about how to live their lives outside of Africa, and they died off. Not only did people die off from the actual eruption itself, which was just massive, but it created a bottleneck due to these grave changes in what's going on in the ecology and the basically basically everything that's going on around the planet in this area because of this massive effects of this volcano. Some of the climate effects that we know were created was a marine sediment core that we discovered near Toba cause ugh, I'm fucking up so bad. This is terrible. After this eruption, so many things in the ecology and the climate of the planet change in unfavorable ways to modern humans. 
This was because of a volcanic winter that lasted for a couple years and the massive ash plume that went for almost a thousand miles into the atmosphere, it is believed, would have rained down across much of the Earth, killing plants, different animals that might have been more susceptible to specific climates and their niches. Once these niches were gone, so were the animals. And once the animals were gone, so were the humans that hunted them. And our population dropped to about three to 10,000 surviving individuals. And it's believed that our population today, outside of Africa, the billions of people that it is, is all descended from these, this very small population of about one to 10,000 breeding pairs about 70,000 years ago. So that is why so many of us are actually so related to one another, because we did not have time to genetically diversify as we spread across the earth. While humans prior to us had, and other species had, which created speciesation and the Neanderthals and Eastmans and other hominins as they found more and new ecological niches to adapt to, when this eruption happened, and it was so close to where so many modern humans had migrated outside of Africa, the population was just devastated. It was... I mean, going down to a thousand to ten thousand breeding pairs is almost close to an extinction event for really any other species, but it is due to our unique human ingenuity, creativeness, and ability to adapt to unique ecological and ecological niches that has allowed us to explode our population after this genetic bottleneck. And once we exploded our population, I there's been no turning back. And there really won't be until we reach the point where our resources are depleted and we have to really cut back on the populations and how that's going to look and what's going to happen. I don't want to think about it and hopefully none of us are around to see what that looks like. One answer could be flying off into space, as some billionaires like to think today, but realistically, we are on this planet, this is our home, and we need to look at ways to fix the problems that we face here today. But I'm not here to tell you about all these problems that we're going to face and everything going on because we're here to learn about anthropology. Of course, all of that is a huge part of anthropology and we should all keep that in the back of our minds, but we're learning about genetic bottlenecks today. So while many species grow through genetic bottlenecks, some go extinct and some don't. Obviously, modern humans, Homo sapiens, or to some Homo sapiens sapiens, we, of course, were able to survive and not only that, but learn and adapt to new methods of survival that allowed us to explore the rest of the world to not only be the only species to find and be in most lands on this planet, including Antarctica, we are the only species to colonize such a vast quantity of land on this planet. And it is because of this bottleneck and our explosion afterwards that we are here today in the ways that we are here. Our species would look extraordinarily different if 70,000 years ago we were not almost wiped off the face of the earth. And we can know that by the diversity we find in the African tribes. So I think that about does it for this video. There's really not too much to talk about. You get the general basis and idea. We had a large population. There was a huge, massive volcanic, volcanic explosion that created a volcanic winter and caused a great dying of many plants and species. And it led to a bottleneck for modern humans who, again, we went down to possibly even a thousand breeding pairs. So 2,000 adults. Uh, and we survived. It's fascinating. It's unbelievable. And it really goes to show one reason why we are so amazing. All right. I'll see you guys next time. If you like this video and if you learned something new, please drop a like, subscribe, and maybe even share it if you thought this was pretty cool. Uh, next video will probably be a Skulls with Seth, so look forward to that, and I've got more interviews planned for the story of us coming up, so it was great seeing you guys, and, uh, talk to you later.